Alright, picking up right where we left off in part 1. With the fuel tank completed, we can start working up front and get the old carburetor out and the new throttle body in. A cool bit of history I learned about the car. After investigating the part numbers on the carburetor, it's actually a GM service replacement from April 1967 and is the exact same model carb that originally came on the car. So instead of the original unit being removed some point in the last oh, 60 plus years or so for any number of possible reasons, it appears to have required replacement, possibly in the first few years of ownership, maybe even as a warranty job. But that's just speculation on my end, as I don't really have any insight into dealerships and warranties from that long ago. side we have our O2 sensor connection. We'll go ahead and drop this below and tap into the exhaust after the manifold. We have our connections for the throttle here and we'll reconnect this return spring as well. We'll hook this PCV breather back up to the air cleaner at the end. We also need to move this fuel line nipple to the other side and we have a pressure regulator here we will not use, so I'll cap that off since we don't need to run a return line. I've already gone ahead and hooked up the vacuum hose to the distributor vacuum advance. There are three vacuum ports on the inside edge that we can use. Next, we'll need to remove the factory temperature sensor and replace it with one that's compatible with the new unit. But first, we need to go below and remove the fuel pump. Removing the original fuel pump is pretty straightforward but messy. Be prepared for some gas and oil getting on you. Remove the fuel inlet and outlet hoses and two bolts connecting the unit to the engine block. Remove the push rod from the engine as well. You will also need to install a block off plate to seal the engine back up. You do not put the push rod back in. Once you remove the mounting plate, go ahead and clean up the mating surfaces so you have a good seal for the new gasket. Unfortunately, I did not get the install of the block off plate on film, but one note, you will need to use additional washers to make up the reduced length needed on the upper two bolts. Next, let's install the O2 sensor on the passenger side exhaust. Apologies again as I did not get this all on film. Using a unibit and a punch, I drilled a 3 4 inch hole in the exhaust pipe at least 10 degrees above horizontal. The location is important as the manufacturer warns that you do not want it too low and heavy moisture buildup potentially causing issues. Back up top, we'll start getting all the fuel connections corrected. Next we'll go ahead and remove the original temp sensor from the intake. This required a breaker bar and a lot of oomph to remove. We 
With the old sensor out, let's make sure the threads are nice and clean and in good shape. In order to use the sensor that came with the kit, I had to get a half inch NPT female to 3 8 inch NPT male adapter. These are pretty cheap online, just a few bucks. Adding some thread sealant is recommended as well, here to help prevent leaks. So we have our fuel line from the back coming in here. I'm gonna run it up here, create a mount off that bolt so we can have the fuel filter hanging right there. Turn, make the turn, come up here, and feeds into the throttle body here. I've already got the new temp sensor installed. Unfortunately on this generation small block, there's really no other place to add a temp sensor, so I have to replace the factory one. Let's start getting some of these wires organized as well. Got to hook up the O2 sensor connection. We have that down here on this. Can't see it in the dark but it's down there. Then we'll start wiring everything from the inside and that's then we're getting real close. So let's work on the wiring here. We have this, which will be the negative coil. Let's go to the negative on the coil here, pretty straightforward. Ignition wire. So this will just be when you turn on the ignition inside the car with the key. It'll give power so you're not running all the time. In inline fuse here, relay. Positive, negative, straight to the battery, and then we have our fuel pump power. So we'll run this into the cabin along with, with this. This will run all the way back to the trunk where those wires from the fuel sending unit are coming in. And we'll hook those up as well as a few other lines we'll need to add for the gauge and a few other things. everyone that about wraps up part two in part three we will get the interior wiring in allowing the rear and the front of the car to talk to each other maybe we'll even get this car running again see you on the other side <laughs>